welcome all. I know there are a number of people joining as I speak. This is the second in a two-part series of webinars. It's entitled Greening the Curriculum, Embedding Sustainable Healthcare in All Curricula for Healthcare Professionals. And it's my great pleasure to welcome Nula Hampson from the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare in the UK as our speaker yet again. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the recording of the first webinar, to remind you that Nula is lead pharmacist and senior educator at, with the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. Originally from Dublin, Nula is based in Nottingham in England. Much of Nula's clinical career was spent in primary care and general practice in England, where she held various roles, including prescribing advisor and practice employed clinical pharmacist. Since 2010, Nula has been involved in postgraduate education, focusing on independent prescribing and primary care pharmacy. And since becoming sustainability lead for the Centre for Pharmacy Postgraduate Education in 2019, Nula has focused her career on raising awareness of the health impacts of climate change and educating healthcare professionals on the transformation to sustainable healthcare. At CSH, Nula Set Strategy for Sustainable Pharmacy Initiatives has launched the Sustainable Pharmacy Network and facilitates net zero leadership training and sustainable healthcare courses. Nula is a member of Pharmacy Declares, a group of climate conscious pharmacy professionals in the UK and joint lead of the Greener Primary Care Pharmacy Association, and she co-chairs the National Sustainability and Pharmacy Education Group. And I want to sincerely thank Nula for taking time yet again to join us today and for taking time and effort over calls and so forth to, insofar as is feasible, contextualize and customize her comments today um, to the Irish setting as well as broader speaking. Um, Nula is going to speak for 30, 35 minutes to allow us a little extra time uh, for Q&A at the end. And instead of circulating slides, we're recording the session and we'll record that link to the recording by email. As you'll see from Nula's style that really you have to hear what she's saying for the slides to uh, make sense anyway. Please do use the chat throughout the session. Um, it's, Lena is very kindly uh, recording this session for us, but we have agreed that once we have finished Nula's presentation and given ideas for networking in the future, which is one of the key aims of this session, we will turn off the recording to facilitate people to a free discussion around what they're currently doing and potentially set up networks for themselves. So with that, over to Nula for um, greening the curriculum. Thank you very much, uh, Nula. Great. Um, thank you very much for that uh, introduction, Cicely. Oh, hopefully you can see my slides now. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nula Hampson. I'm very pleased to be here today representing the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. <laughs> So just a quick introduction, CSH is a charity founded in 2008. Um, we aim to inspire and empower people with the knowledge, skills and tools to play their part in the transformation to sustainable health care. In Ireland, we've worked extensively with Brett Duane and Dentistry here at Trinity, RCSI and Queen's University Belfast, our SUSQI beacon sites, and we're working with the Chief Pharmaceutical Officers team in Northern Ireland on their medicine strategy. So I'm really happy to be joining you today to present our work to an Irish audience. I'm very grateful to Cicely for presenting um, this opportunity. As Cicely said, my background is in clinical pharmacy and general practice and postgraduate pharmacy education. Um, I currently co-chair the Sustainability and Pharmacy Education Group, which is representation from all of the schools in pharmacy in the UK um, and several in Ireland. Much of the work which I'm presenting today is on behalf of my colleagues at CSH, in particular, Steffi Barna and Francis Mortimer. So the focus of this talk is on curriculum um, and therefore the focus tends to be on undergraduate teaching and learning. But I just want to make the point at the beginning that we actually need to be thinking about educating for sustainable health care um, throughout health professionals career. It's an emerging area and we're all on a learning journey. Um, and most importantly, we need all of healthcare to be practicing sustainably as we work towards a livable future. The aims of today's session 
um, are to provide a bit of an overview um, of education for sustainable healthcare, including sort of what's out there already, um, including the AMI document and learning outcomes, um, looking at some examples in practice, and then, as Cicely said, really looking at developing um, collaboration, sharing, and networking um, in Ireland going forward. So, first of all, a quick reminder, why is all of this climate change and sustainable healthcare important and urgent? Why is it part of our jobs as healthcare professionals and as educators? So, climate change is happening now, it's impacting health now, and this is being increasingly recognised and acknowledged. So, you'll see here last week a group of Swiss women successfully argued that Switzerland's inaction on climate change is impacting their human rights. The European Court of Human Rights ruled that Switzerland had violated the women's right to family life, and this case hinged on the fact that older women are more likely to die in heat waves. So that's a really significant outcome. Uh, we also know that the health impacts of climate change and burning fossil fuels are happening now, and we have evidence for these both globally, and you can look at the Lancet report for that, um, and here in Ireland, specifically in relation to air pollution. So we know that climate change is impacting health negatively, and we also know that healthcare activity is contributing to that climate change, which is causing harm. So this first image is an image of the waste created from one woman's breast reconstruction surgery. Healthcare activity contributes to the climate crisis through direct contribution to greenhouse gas emissions and the creation of waste and pollution. So we know that this is causing harm, and we know that healthcare is adding to this. So we need to minimize the negative impacts of healthcare activity whilst maximizing the quality of care, because we have a responsibility to optimize care and no health professional wants to cause harm to their patients. And healthcare is also vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, impacting healthcare's ability to provide services when they are most needed. So we have a responsibility um, as educators to prepare health professionals for the future which they will face. There are now requirements to include sustainability both, both within practice and education. So just a few examples here, but increasingly across the professions and specialties, there is a drive to embed sustainability within good practice, professional frameworks and educational curricula. This lends legitimacy and urgency to the cause of sustainable health care. If it's in the requirements, it will get done. So we really should be encouraging and supporting this approach. So we have this responsibility to prepare health professionals for the future which they face. Um, and this is increasingly supported and mandated by our institutions, professional and regulatory bodies. So I really believe that as health professionals um, and as educators, we really should be lobbying these organisations to put these requirements and guidelines in place and um, to enable that systematic move to sustainable healthcare, which we really need. Um, because time really is of the essence now. As educators, it's also really worth remembering the potential impact of education on the health profession and the difference that that light bulb moment can have and the impact that changes by one individual can create um, in a ripple effect. And this is described um, in this um, article, Learning to Treat the Climate Emergency Together, Social Cooking Interventions by the Health Community. And all of these references we'll send around um, as a separate document after today's event. So health professionals are trusted and the health sector purchasing power is huge. It allocates over 10% of gross world product. So as trusted voices within the communities around the world, health professionals and health organisations have a really enormous potential to influence the social and policy landscapes in support of decarbonisation. A coordinated global approach by the health community supported by education on planetary health and climate change has the potential to create healthier communities and transform health facilities into anchor institutions of sustainability, leading to shifts in social norms, policies, and investments that activate socioeconomic tipping points and catalyze the rapid decarbonization that we so desperately need to protect health and health systems. And we need to think about interconnectedness. This is about the bigger picture, uh, the inextricable links between planetary health and public health. We need to ensure a systems thinking approach to this. Sustainable healthcare broadens the focus from managing pathology at the point of presentation, such as within a hospital setting, to addressing the upstream determinants of health and disease, which are negatively influenced by human actions. So just thinking about how we live our lives today, the levels of inactivity, the type of food that we eat. So this might require unlearning familiar framing of medicine away from that sort of biomedical model, um, which kind of currently concerns only the current clinical encounter and developing a broader understanding of health 
to inform a change of perspectives in clinical practice. So we need to really refocus on prevention, on empowering patients and communities to live a healthier and more connected life. And that brings us nicely to the principles of sustainable healthcare, which we introduced in the last webinar. And um, so just really briefly, these have been developed by Francis Mortimer at the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. Um, and they're listed in order um, of importance and impact, starting with prevention. So preventing disease, preventing exacerbation, preventing deterioration is the most impactful thing that you can do in terms of reducing the environmental impact of healthcare. Empowering patients um, to live a healthier lifestyle and to have a greater role and agency in managing their own healthcare and being um, engaged and informed and involved in that. Then thinking about streamlining care to minimize waste and stripping out wasteful activities. And finally, um, introducing low carbon alternatives. So prioritizing treatments that have a lower environmental impact. This is a really useful frame to keep in the back of your mind to rethink what we do in clinical practice and to re reframe how you present your teaching. We also use these driver diagrams, um, which this one includes um, sustainable healthcare. So in addition to the four principles, we think about operational resource use as well. And the aims are primarily are to reduce healthcare activity um, through prevention, patient empowerment and lean pathways. And then for the activity that we need to undertake um, to reduce the impact of that activity by choosing low carbon alternatives and careful use of our uh, resources. So when thinking about designing improvements, um, the principles can be used to generate change ideas. So this is a really great tool to use either with your team to think about your teaching or with your students to sort of generate ideas or critiques of current pathways. Um, and all of these tools and templates are freely available on the SUSQI website, which I will um, refer to later. So we use the principles of sustainable healthcare to review our current practice and identify change ideas. And then we use SUSQI, sustainable quality improvement, to study the system, design improvement, and measure impact. So SUSQI um, uses a sustainable value equation to measure each element of sustainable value. So it looks at outcomes not just of patients, but of whole populations, and then looks at um, impacts on environmental, social, and financial impact. Um, so it's not aiming to kind of arrive at a single figure, but rather to better understand the true impact of services and improvements. So it's looking at quality improvement through the lens of sustainability, and it slots easily into existing frameworks. Um, and this again just really enables us um, to integrate sustainability into mainstream um, education or clinical practice. But we saw examples of completed SUSQI projects in previous lectures, um, and there's a bank of SUSQI projects on our network, again, which I'll refer to later. Many years ago, the Royal College of Physicians um, identified sustainability as one of the seven domains um, of quality, um, and they sh that sustainability should run through and moderate other domains. So it's really important that we um, take sustainability into account um, in our day-to-day decision-making, in our clinical decision-making, um, and see it as a theme that run through, runs through everything um, rather than sort of an add-on or something that we think about separately. So the aim is that by understanding the principles and the SUSQI approach, we can start to see things through this sustainability lens. And indeed, this is the feedback that we've had from medical and nursing students when we've evaluated teaching SUSQI. Students report that um, learning about the principles and the SUSQI framework enables them to see their practice differently and that kind of once they've learned it, they can't really unsee it. So they start questioning and challenging current practice and identifying ways of providing healthcare in a more sustainable way. But they move beyond that sort of typical first focus on recycling to a more effective approach, which considers prevention first. So um, what are the perspectives of students, academics and health professionals? So just to um, get started, I thought it'd be nice to just see what's happening in the room in terms of your own personal opinions. So uh, going to just launch a poll. For those who can't see it, the questions are, how important to you is it to include sustainable healthcare within undergraduate education and within postgraduate education? How confident do you feel to embed sustainable healthcare within your teaching? And do you currently include sustainable healthcare within your teaching? So great that the majority of you think that including sustainable healthcare in undergraduate um, health education is essential, or at least important, and the same for postgraduate, but a bit more neutrality on the postgraduate side of things. In terms of feeling confident, 38% of you feeling confident about embedding sustainable healthcare within your own teaching, 
62% not confident. And in terms of currently including sustainable health care, we've got 31% who are currently including it, 69 who are not. So even within this room, great opportunity for collaboration and to share and learn from people who are at different stages on this journey, uh, which I think is really collaborative approach is the way forward. We, we haven't got time to be messing about. We need to be helping each other out and moving forward um, on this journey together. Okay, back to our slides, hopefully. So this is a quick summary of some perspectives from the literature. Obviously, in any population, there's going to be a range of views and opinions, but kind of here are some highlights. And um, so in terms of recognizing health professionals, recognizing the climate crisis, um, this is increasingly happening. So back in September 21, more than 200 health journals called on governments to take emergency action to tackle the catastrophic harm to health from climate change. That's not just about climate change. In October 23, an editorial published in more than 200 health journals around the world called for the climate and nature crisis to be recognized as one indivisible global health emergency. The call is on the WHO to make this declaration before or at the 77th World Health Assembly, which is coming up next month. Um, surveys, of, excuse me, surveys of academics um, include a qualitative descriptive study, which was carried out at RCSI, as well as several studies in the UK. Um, and this found that some academics don't feel they have the knowledge or expertise to teach sustainable healthcare. So mirroring what we've just seen in our own poll. Um, some don't see it as important, and that included both academics and students. Um, in the RCSI, the most cited potential barrier to implementing a planetary health curriculum that emerged from the interviews was that students might consider planetary health as lacking relevance within the medical curriculum. Um, and overall, the factors at the RCSI, and this was a few years ago, um, influencing the integration of planetary health into undergraduate medical education were perceived relevance among students and staff, educator knowledge, overcrowded curriculum, embedding and spiraling the content, enhancement of the university brand, lack of senior man management support and the evidence base. And we'll have a look at those in a little more detail as we go on. Um, however, there's also recognition that, that education for sustainable healthcare is not yet widespread. Um, and there is a demand from students for this teaching. So in a recent survey of the inclusion of climate change and air pollution in the medical curricula in more than 100 countries, only 15% of medical schools have included climate change and even fewer have incorporated air pollution. And given that air pollution is the biggest public health risk um, globally, that's, that's sort of quite a, 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 an issue. A recent Australian study of 164 undergraduate pharmacy students concluded that Australian pharmacy students lacked the knowledge of environmentally sustainable pharmacy practice and few reported having curricular exposure to this in their degrees. So uh, the planetary health report card also sort of demonstrates the demand from students very clearly and um, their, their demand to embed education on sustainable healthcare within their teaching, but also for universities to be more sustainable in their day to day business. So the planetary health report, report card was founded in 2019. It's a metric based tool for evaluating and approving planetary health content in health professional schools. Uh, the metrics cover not just teaching, but also research. Um, outreach, support for students and sustainability on campus. So at each participating institution, student-led faculty mentored teams fill out the report card. Um, and in doing that, they identify opportunities for improvement and also reaching out to relevant staff and faculty on the way. On the way. Uh, results are published in an annual Earth Day report. So this year's uh, results due out next week on Earth Day, um, and this helps to track institutional change over time. The kind of the growing numbers of reports on this are providing momentum and practical suggestions for healthcare schools and faculties to implement sustainability measures and address sustainability across the curricula. So the reports from last year, which are just about to be superseded, um, include 96 medical schools in 11 countries. In Ireland, that includes the RCSI, Trinity, UCD, UCC, UCG and Queen's. Um, four nursing schools in the UK, US and Canada. Uh, that's Brighton in the US, six schools of pharmacy in Australia and the US, unfortunately none from the UK or Ireland, uh, and one school of physiotherapy, again Brighton. Uh, in the coming year, dentistry and veterinary medicine will also be included. These reports provide a really useful framework for baselining current action and planning improvements going forward, um, and all of the reports are freely available on the website. And in addition, in the last year, the PHRC team have mapped the climate resources for health education curricular materials to their metrics. And again, I've linked to that um, in the resources. 
We talked about the need for education for sustainable healthcare, and we know there is growing demand. So let's take a look at what we mean by education for sustainable healthcare. So the Association for Medical Education in Europe, AMI for short, has developed a consensus statement on education for sustainable healthcare. Um, and this is more than just identifying the principles and applying them to healthcare. It's about understanding the principles of sustainable healthcare within the wider global context of human rights, social value, health inequalities, climate justice and harmony with nature. So it encompasses environmental accountability, which is the obligation to ensure that education and research contributes to active development, promotion and protection of environmentally and ecologically sustainable solution. It also aligns with social accountability, which is the responsibility of health education institutions to focus their considerable resources and capacity on the priority health concerns of the societies which they serve. It requires clinicians to be cognizant of and responsible, responsive to planetary health requ requirements, um, which still requires not only relevant knowledge and skills, but also values. Um, so education for sustainable healthcare engenders values such as prioritization of health equity, human rights, and respect for life and ecosystems. So the infographic from the Amy consensus statement depicts the vision for education for sustainable healthcare in which knowledge and values guide practice informed by indigenous perspectives and part of the wider um, planetary health paradigm. Uh, the statements are guided by indigenous traditional wisdom and connection to nature, informed by evidence on the safe operate, operating space for humanity and Rayworth's model of donut economics, and is shaped to align with the internationally agreed sustainable development goals. So in particular, education for sustainable healthcare aligns with sustainable development goals um, uh, number four, um, quality education to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Um, with goal 12, which is to ensure sustainable consumption and production and goal 13 to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. The values-based education helps to prepare health professionals to work towards a sustainable development goal and equity and human rights need to be central to this framework. Uh, we talked in the last lecture um, about climate injustice and the fact that uh, the impacts of climate change will disproportionately affect those who are already um, discriminated against or at the lower end of the socioeconomic scale. So really important that we are um, aware of that. Um, the Sustainable Development Goals Academy has a whole range um, of free resources available in terms of educating towards the Sustainable Development Goals. So another one for the resource list. These are really broad concepts that require embedding across all aspects of healthcare education. To support this process, the AMI consensus has identified three learning outcomes and objectives for environmentally sustainable healthcare. And they've linked these to learning domains and given examples of specific learning objectives. Um, and these are based upon the three original priority learning outcomes developed by CSH back in 2014. The AMI document also provides suggested learning activities and forms of both formative and summative assessment. So it's a really useful document to refer to as a starting point in curriculum design. Um, so outcome number one is to describe how the environment and human health interact um, at different levels. This is a knowledge-based learning outcome, and it focuses on that basic foundation of knowledge, understanding the interdependency of planetary and human health, how climate change impacts on health, and how healthcare is vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. So really important to ensure that everybody has this foundational knowledge and that this is instilled early on in the curriculum to enable students to understand the relevance of climate and ecological crisis to health. Um, and if you refer back to our previous webinar, uh, we covered a lot of this in that. And here are just some examples of the resources. There are loads of resources out there. So again, a really good opportunity if you have identified some good resources to share that with your colleagues. And um, those of you based in Northern Ireland will be able to access the eLearning for Health Foundational um, 30 minute free online modules on environmentally sustainable healthcare, which have been produced by CSH and the NHS. Uh, unfortunately not available in the Republic of Ireland um, at the moment. Uh, these are sort of a load globally available um, resources. The Royal Society of Medicine a couple of years back created a series of YouTube videos around the science of climate change and the relevance to health. So that's, um, they're quite long, but really um, detailed um, and informative. Um, the Teach This QI resources, and I'll come to this website in a moment, again, has a list of foundational um, resources and the Lancet countdown we mentioned last time, um, tracking um, climate change and impacts on health going forward. 
PSH runs a range of foundation courses, and these offer an overview of the complex relationship between human health and the climate and ecological crises. We outline the ways in which the health system is both vulnerable to and contributing to climate change and ecological degradation. And then we explore what a sustainable healthcare system might look like, and we consider this within the wider benefits um, and how we can achieve this. So these courses consist of um, access to online materials, which you get access to for six months, and a half-day workshop online, which focuses on developing your piece of work going forward, and then access to follow-up um, online drop-in sessions. Uh, we have an intro session, which is sort of suitable to all, um, and then we also have some specific clinical areas, so and people can choose which is relevant to them. Um, and going forward, we're planning on developing ones that are focusing on um, educators. The learning outcome two is to demonstrate the knowledge and capabilities needed to improve the environmental sustainability of health systems using system thinking. So this is about knowledge and application of that knowledge. And um, systems thinking is an approach which, which acknowledges the interdependence of all the agents in the system and is particularly useful in addressing complex or wicked problems, such as the health impacts of climate change. Um, it's useful for identifying where small changes in one part of a system might have large or unintended consequences um, on another part. And the SysQI approach provides an ideal framework um, for this, for evaluating the environmental, social, and financial impacts of a patient pathway and identifying ways to optimize the sustainable value within that pathway. We looked at the sustainable value equation earlier. SysQI framework is a four-step process um, to identify changes for more sustainable approaches to healthcare, but taking into account the, the um, environmental, social, and financial aspects of the existing process and then studying how the proposed change will impact each of those factors. In the work done at CSH, um, we sort of identified that QI projects are a mandatory part of postgraduate medical training in the UK, and um, graduating medical students must be competent in QI theory. However, often trainees report feeling disengaged with QI, and um, with some describing it as a tick box exercise. We've seen that integrating sustainability into QI can provide an opportunity to enhance motivation and engagement while simultaneously equipping learners to make practical changes to improve sustainability in healthcare. Um, and a case study of the SysQI approach at Bristol Medical School demonstrated it was really effective in building motivation and skills and reframing thinking on QI in that context. CSH did a further evaluation of SysQI teaching in undergraduate and postgraduate medical and nursing education across seven universities in England. Um, it's included 177 students, uh, medical and nursing, 20% of them were nursing. Um, and the aim was to describe, analyze, and explore the application of the SysQI approach. Um, this was a mixed method study design, which included seven live online teaching sessions um, over a six month period. So students were given pre-reading, then there was a live workshop with an opening lecture and interactive breakout sessions where they explored the tools and the steps in the SysQI framework and worked through those for case studies. And then there was a post-session survey and they got a response rate of 72% on the survey. Um, so the survey responses were largely positive. As you can see, students were really highly motivated and those students who really um, valued social justice um, were really found this teaching useful. Um, and what we found is that this teaching enables students to bring their personal values into their workplace um, activities. And the most frequent motivating factors for engaging in SysQI were wanting to learn about sustainability in healthcare for its own sake and wanting to be capable of improving sustainability within healthcare. All of the respondents agreed it was time well spent. Um, and 92 and 97% respectively agreed that they understood how to deliver sustainable value and how to implement SysQI respectively. 97% uh, agree they had learned something valuable and 87% intended to apply this QI to their future learning. It seemed to have a really big impact in terms of what they intended to do going forward. So you'll see that these first few quotes kind of um, really focus on immediate value and that students found it useful and it was refreshing and it resonated with their intrinsic value. Um, so within the um, teaching sort of setting, not everyone necessarily went on to do SysQI projects but they often develop this lens on their day-to-day -day practice that then had wider impact. So they couldn't stop seeing um, things kind of once they've learned about it. So this really helped them um, to then relook at their practice um, through this sustainability lens. This is kind of that transformational value of seeing practice differently. 
um, the postgraduate doctors were significantly more likely to apply the teaching to practice within that time frame. That was obviously due to their sort of clinical setting as opposed to the students who had shorter um, clinical um, settings. Um, also, there was an aspect of well-being. So many people are very overwhelmed um, by climate change and sort of what's happening. Um, so finding concrete ways to um, deal with this within their day-to-day -day practice, uh, where they can make a difference, um, kind of not just sort of cycling to work or whatever, but actually having quite an impact on clinical practice um, that really gave people, um, really motivated them and made them feel more hopeful um, about the future. The overall conclusion was that SUSQI toolkit leads to self-reported knowledge, confidence and motivation, um, both for SUSQI um, and sustainable healthcare. So really positive outcomes from that study a couple of years back. So much of this information that you need for SUSQI is available freely on our SUSQI.org website. Step by step guide and all the tools and templates are here. And then there's a whole section on actually teaching SUSQI. And again, the majority of these are freely available. Um, you do have to register, but that's just so we can track sort of who's using the resources and where they are. Um, and we run um, we run courses. So again, those half day workshops either on doing SUSQI and on teaching SUSQI, those are separate um, courses. Um, so lots of resources available on there. And then also our networks, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, lots of um, information and example projects on there. We also have a YouTube channel at Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. And if you go to our YouTube channel and look at the SUSQI playlist, one of the entries is embedding sustainability into healthcare education lessons learned from practice. And that's a bit of a deep dive into that study, which I've just mentioned. So that's well worth um, a watch if you're interested in this. And if you want to take SUSQI a step further and embed it within your organization, you might be interested in the SUSQI Academy. Um, so this is developed to support health education and health provider institutes to embed sustainable healthcare into their existing QI teaching and practice. Um, so we're currently working with institutes in England, Scotland, Wales, Australia and Canada. Um, RCSI and Queen's and Belfast have been beacon sites with this QI um, in the past. Um, so this is just a more sort of tailored approach uh, with sort of quarterly form forums and a more mentoring. Um, so um, you can either scan that website that QR code or go to the website just to get more information um, about that. And this is just a few of the testimonials from some of the organisations we've worked with um, recently um, in terms of the expertise that they felt the Academy brought them and giving people opportunity to learn, share and network and sort of to move their sustainability journey forward for their organisation. So going back to our learning outcomes, the third learning outcome, discuss how the duty of health professionals to protect and promote health is impacted by the interdependence of health and ecosystems and implications for health professionals' personal professional lives. This obviously encompasses knowledge, values, mindset and agency. It's a holistic view requiring understandings of those wider concepts of nature, health inequalities, behaviour change, etc. Um, and is at a much more advanced level, but not something you would expect students to achieve early on in their courses. Thinking about just starting to design sustainable healthcare into the curricula, uh, the AMI consensus statement includes a number of suggestions for embedding sustainability. Recommendations have also been published by the Planetary Health Report Card and a number of other articles within the literature. But we'll just take a look at these along with some of the identified challenges um, and enablers. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so one of the challenges frequently cited in the literature is that of an already overcrowded curriculum and where do we fit sustainable healthcare in? So really important for faculty to recognize that addressing environmental and ecological issues is a matter of urgency and needs to be a core priority. <clears throat> so I think it's clear that this is not something that you can include as a one-off tick box, it needs to be embedded as a theme across the curriculum. And this is a recommendation within much of the literature. However, we also know that lots of educators are uh, not confident with their level of knowledge. So this baseline level of knowledge needs to be um, established. Sustainability literacy is really essential if faculty are to educate for sustainable healthcare. The key concepts include causes of the ecological crisis, the health impact and the ethical dimensions. Um, so discrete teaching might be necessary to establish understanding of fundamental concepts, ideally beginning from early in the course. Early introduction and integration of content in the curriculum emphasizes its importance and its relationship with professional identify, um, identify, identity, um, addressing that challenge of students and staff not being sustainable healthcare as relevant. 
and then we can then build on those concepts in subsequent years. But in putting sustainability into the existing curriculum, we'll also hopefully see and ease that challenge of the overcrowded curriculum. And um, it can be incorporated quickly by embedding into existing teaching sessions across all subjects and specialties. And you can go back to those principles of sustainable healthcare to help with that. Um, and then so highlighting the environmental connections can enhance learning as students will often have some baseline knowledge. And the clinical focus is really important to establish the relevance to health outcomes. So a first step might be to identify core education for sustainable healthcare learning outcomes and map these to local curriculum, competencies or other frameworks. And that's exactly what we've been doing in the UK in pharmacy. And again, a blended approach is recommended, perhaps initially using didactic teaching to embed the principles and foundational knowledge and then building on this in a spiral curriculum using a range of approaches, including case studies, small group and peer learning, problem solving and ethical values. Um, important also to embed in assessment. This might include multiple choice questions for factual knowledge and part of OSCEs and to ensure integration into clinical practice and um, clinical questions um, and case studies. So a whole range of ways forward. Oops. Sorry, slide's going a bit wrong there. Um, so this slide summarizes, summaries, summarizes some of the considerations related to the difference in approach. Uh, there's a value in both, um, and staff and faculty development is essential for both. Um, the approach which was helpful in the CSH study was that students selected components were like an experiential learning experience for staff and students. Um, staff were not confident um, in this teaching, but the student selected module att attracted really engaged and knowledgeable, knowledgeable students would help to co-create the approaches going forward. And um, so this spiral curriculum um, sort of is really um, the, the way forward. The infusion approach, um, the University of Southampton School of Medicine um, used this within uh, their teaching. And the infusion approach was originally developed at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount, Mount Sinai. The key principle is not to overwhelm students with excessive information they must learn but to continually reinforce the importance of climate change and sustainability in relation to health in a wide variety of contexts. So whatever approach is, take, is taken, coordination is essential to avoid duplication. Uh, feedback from students on the level is important and you'll need to develop this as time progresses and things changes. Uh, another recommendation was around collaboration and creation of learning. Um, and again, there's lots of resources to support with this. Um, this helps to address the challenge of staff not feeling confident in their knowledge of sustainable healthcare. Um, so taking a collaborative approach to learning with um, other students, um, with other clinicians, um, and with other um, members of the team. This extends to pooling resources. Um, there's lots of resources available externally and also kind of sharing resources internally. An MDT approach is essential because of the complexity of the ecological price, uh, crisis is going to require a transdisciplinary approach and um, going forward um, uh, in practice. So just, uh, just to show you some of the resources that are available out there, globally, there's a range of resources available from sample curricula through to lecture slides, case studies and MCQs. Um, this is a sort of resources that are available in the UK and Ireland. So the Medical Schools Council has published this curriculum for the UK Education for Sustainable Healthcare. Um, in the, um, in the AMI document, uh, implement two, there's a list of frameworks and guidance that's also available in the ESH. And uh, the RCGP in England has created um, lots of resources on their um, Net Zero website. <coughs> and the Irish Doctors for the Environment has a curriculum working group, um, which is led mainly by medical students. Um, and they are sort of representing, I think, five out of six medical schools. And then you have the CHIME, which is a climate health and med medical education and group representing all of the medical schools in Ireland. So lots of collaboration already happening. Again, in the UK, the Royal College of Nursing has developed some training. There's a NurseSus EU toolkit, uh, which is sustainability, literacy and competency in nursing education. And Healthcare Without Harm um, has created um, some um, resources uh, for nurses, for education for nurses also. <laughs> Excuse me. In terms of pharmacy in the UK, the Royal Pharmaceutical Society have developed a series of policies and the education um, sustainability and pharmacy education group, which I talked about earlier, um, has developed this document which basically looks at the um, PPHC, sorry, the PPHC learning outcomes 
and has mapped those two um, sustainable learning outcomes. That document is freely available on the Pharmacy Declares website. That group gets together. It's got representatives from all of the UK schools of pharmacy and they are sharing resources going forward. Uh, dentistry, obviously a lot of work happening with Brett Duane and um, CSH. Um, they are um, the uh, Dublin Dental University Hospital is hosting this course and Brett has been involved in developing the sustainable dentistry guidance. For AHPs, again, there is a curricula just developed and there is going to be um, an online webinar on that next week. So again, you can scan that QR code if you are interested in uh, getting involved in that. So links to clinical practice. Again, it's really important to collaborate with clinicians, to bring in sustainable clinical guidelines and initiatives to the teaching. Um, relating teaching to the medical practice and clinical care of patients will have the biggest impact on students. Um, and really important to clearly demonstrate the importance of planetary health to clinical practice and health outcomes to improve buy-in. Um, again, CSH specialties, we've got a whole range of information on our website on each of these specialties. And um, so you can get that specialist knowledge related to specific clinical areas. And again, a lot, lot of resources available nationally. Visible leadership, really important. In the last webinar, we talked about urgency and agency. So I would encourage everyone to use their agency to lead on this in their own sphere of control and influence and to encourage and support demand and leadership of those above you or of organizations that you might work with, such as professional bodies. Institutional backing is really needed, consistent messaging from the highest level, which relates sustainability teaching to the university's ethos and strategy can smooth progress in embedding teaching and leveraging the university brand. So highlighting the potential of these topics to enhance the university's reputation. Supporting students to facilitate their leadership, for example, through the planetary health support card, and then evaluating the innovation so that we can continue to add to the evidence base. Thinking about um, visible leadership, the institutions really need to walk the sustainability talk and where possible promote practices um, such as divesting from fossil fuels and um, in, including sustainability in their day-to-day -day practice. Some other um, uh, initiatives that are going on at the moment are Edible Campus, where there's community gardening going on and campuses producing food and plant-based universities where universities are only providing plant-based food. So eco distress is also an issue. 75% of young people around the world are frightened of the future because of climate change. Eco distress, not an illness, but a rational reaction to the future which we face. Um, and what they found um, is that addressing sustainability issues in teaching can cause strong or overwhelming reactions. So you need to be ready to support that. Climate Psychology Alliance is a great um, resource to use for that. So challenges, I think we've sort of been through all of these overcrowded curricula, level of knowledges, um, lack of um, sort of outcomes and difficulties in examining and emotional impacts and enablers. Um, we've talked through all of those as well, linking to clinical practice, co-creation, collaboration um, are key. So just to finish up with collaboration, uh, really, we want to look forward to sort of collaborating um, locally and um, across the country um, just a few things that are coming up share a conference this is freely available online conference um co-hosted by the university of Brighton um, and center for sustainable Healthcare. so uh, you can use that qr code to sign up to that we have a network for education for sustainable healthcare. it's got really quite significant membership uh, lots of discussion and sharing of events and resources goes on there this is the code for signing up to our network so you can just um Click on that to sign up to our network. We also provide student volunteering um, opportunities at CSH. Again, you can go to our website and find out information about medical students potentially spending their elective with us um, as a remote sort of online um, process that we do. Uh, we also support um, fellowship and scholarship programs that sort are of supporting existing fellows and scholars and ensuring they embed sustainability into their work. The next steps, um, really educate yourself, your team, your students. If you're already educated, you know, reach out to others and um, kind of share what you're doing with them to sort of move people along on their journey and try and use that sustainability lens, start those conversations, engage and empower your students and use your influence where you can um, to influence upwards and to press the change. And we need to remember that uh, we need to do things differently now. We can't solve our problems with the same thinking that we use to create them. So any inquiries generally can go to info at sustainable healthcare. Anything pharmacy related can come directly to me. I'm sorry for taking up so much time. Uh, Cicely is going to talk now about um, collaboration. 
Thank you so much, Nula. And it'll give you a couple of moments to have a look at the chat and the Q&A. There's some very interesting conversations already underway. Thank you for taking the time to be so comprehensive and to remind people that Nula will forward to us a document that includes the references. And even in that final quarter session around how to embed in the curriculum, it's patently obvious uh, Nula, that you're providing the references to back up any of the um, challenges or suggestions in that regard. As well as thanking Nula, I want to sincerely thank the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences in Trinity um, for his immediate support when we put this proposal to Lena and the faculty office. Um, and, and in terms of networking in the future, before we turn off the recording and perhaps discuss amongst ourselves other options. Um, the first thing I would say is that in the chat, there are a number of people of asking about um, potential collaboration. If you want your email address shared with others on the call and others who've been on the previous webinar, et cetera, would you please pop your email address into the chat box now? And we'll take that as confirmation that you want to be networked with others. Secondly, what we have on the slide here is three options. Um, Lena Doherty, our Faculty of Health Science Administrator, is very happy to take any inquiries. As we all well know, Lena has a history and a philosophy of putting people in touch with each other. If she has any notion that will help move important topics such as this forward. We also have a sustainability office in TCD. Uh, Jane Hackett is our manager there at the moment. So lest anybody think that, that this need is within faculty, no, it's not. Um, we have one planet as the expression goes, this is a cross discipline responsibility and potential initiative. And obviously things related specifically to the ESD project itself or anything at all to do with pharmacy, um, please feel free to contact me. And I know that uh, Lena is now going to turn off the recording and put us in a, a position where we can chat off books, as it were, and discuss next steps uh, that might be feasible.